Let's compare and contrast the Seaboard to other traditional keyboard controllers you may have encountered before. Usually, MIDI controllers, and specifically keyboard controllers, are equipped with a certain number of keys and two wheels on the left-hand side which control pitch bend and some sort of modulation. Some have weighted action to give them a more realistic piano-like feel. Others come with knobs, pads, and faders which can be assigned to do different tasks. Here's a comparison as to how a traditional MIDI keyboard controller would send information versus how the Seaboard does so. On a traditional controller, when you press down on a key, it sends MIDI data to your computer. It's sending it a number between 0 and 127, which correlates to how loud you played a note. 127 would be fortissimo, or the loudest you could play, and anywhere between 1 and 20 would be pianissimo, or the softest you could play. This is called note velocity. In Rolly speak, we refer to this as strike, which is the first gesture we're going to look at. When you play the C board, you press down on what is referred to as a key wave, and initially it's the same idea. Depending on how hard you hit the key wave, the C board will send that info along. And this is an oversimplification of what's happening, and I will go into more depth shortly, but for now let's think of strike in the same way. We hit the key wave with a certain velocity, but now we also have the option to press, which is the next gesture, harder or softer, which will adjust things in real time, creating volume swells. And this is also known as aftertouch or channel pressure. On a traditional controller, when you press a note, it sends MIDI information, which associates to when the note began and when it ended, which is the note on off message. We lift our finger off the key and it's basically like flipping a switch. When we lift our finger off of a key wave, we can do so with a varying force of lift off, which we'll be referring to as lift. So instead of a switch, we can have many varying degrees between on and off. Think of lift as a reverse velocity or reverse channel pressure. And again, more on this soon. On a traditional controller, you have two wheels on the left-hand side, and one of them is typically dedicated to bending pitches. Depending on the synth, sometimes this bend will only be a few semitones, and in other instances, it can be an entire octave. We play the note with one hand, and we bend the pitch with the other, and it only allows us to move in one direction or the other, all notes being affected at once, which is referred to as a global parameter. On the seaboard, pitch bend is approached in a multi-dimensional way, which is referred to as glide. On a regular MIDI keyboard, when you bend a pitch, you release the wheel and the note snaps back to its original position. And on the seaboard, when you travel from one pitch to another pitch, as your finger runs left to right on the key waves, you're not being tied to any starting point. Additionally, pitch bend is on a per note basis, and you can bend multiple notes in different directions on the keys and also the ribbons on the top and the bottom here. If I waver my fingertip, I can create a very realistic, expressive vibrato, just like a violin. On a traditional MIDI controller, the second wheel, known as the mod wheel, is mapped to another parameter on your synth, which can be adjusted in real time. Often the mod wheel can be mapped to vibrato or cut off by default. And similar to pitch bend, one hand is able to play the notes while the other adjusts the wheel. And every single note being played will be modulated the same amount, which is another global parameter. Similar to glide, modulation on the seaboard is multidimensional and you can apply specific amounts to each note played. This gesture is referred to as slide. Modulation occurs as you move your fingers up and down each of the key waves. As you move through the different presets in Equator, you'll notice that modulation is typically never mapped to vibrato, since we can achieve such realistic and independent emulations of that with glide or by using one of the LFOs. One of my favorite presets is number 48, which is called string and horns. As you slide your fingers up the key waves, the horn section joins the strings at about midway, and the further we travel, the more the horns take over. It's almost as if I'm conducting an orchestra. Additionally, we have an XY pad on the left-hand side, which is like having two more mod wheels, which run in two dimensions. Moving to preset number 22, phaser attack, Left to right, I'm adjusting one type of modulation, and up to down, I'm adjusting another. So if I move diagonally here, I adjust both simultaneously. There's lots and lots of modulation happening over here. We'll be taking a closer look at each of these five dimensions as we move through the course, and you can imagine how interconnected they all are to each other, and also to how your hands move. 
So as with any instrument, practice makes perfect. And the more you play your C board, the more first nature all of these gestures and movements will feel. And in turn, the more expressive your results will become.